violence. And with me now, the Divinals. Guys, thanks very much for coming on the show. Uh, just watch out for that dishwater, mate. Oh, sorry, Stripping mate. If you could just wipe that up. Guys, I just wonder what you think of the current level of violence in society. Current level? It's a bit loud. A bit loud? Yeah. Yeah, but it's very really loud. Yeah, they should turn it down a bit. Uh, well, you guys, uh, you just spent time touring in America. Didn't Tim get shot? Yes. While you were over there? Yes, I was shot. Just mildly. Not... By a car full of Mexicans. Well... Oh, just a car full of Mexicans. Just a car full. Oh, well, you were lucky then, I suppose. They were just out on Saturday night, right? Yeah, Saturday night, just in the middle of Hollywood. And they just drove past and shot me for something to do. So Saturday night fun. Yeah, know, yeah, that show business, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, it was when all the freeway shootings were yeah. going on last year, so I think it was sort of more promoted with the more that they advertised it on the news that someone was shot in the freeway and so forth. People were going out with more guns, shooting at vehicles, and even though I wasn't in a vehicle, I was a moving object, so they had to go at me. Oh, right. Yeah, how many... Um, What's the uh, what's the mileage uh, what's the mileage per gallon on an LA freeway? You know that? Oh, it's about two litres of blood, I think, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, no. Three bullets a mile, mate. Three bullets Three a mile. Three bullets a mile. Getting on a personal violence, Chrissy, have you ever hit anyone? Yeah. Why? Um, well, I was in Mexico and I was in Ensenada, and these guys sort of grabbed my tits, right? And so um, I kicked them, and there were three of them. And I grabbed three Mexicans and uh, I threw them down the ground and I sort of kicked them and kicked them in the head. And three Mexicans. Uh, three Mexicans, yeah. Right, I'll be very careful with further questions. I think there wasn't obviously there's no point in sitting down and talking about it. No. It wasn't a gesture of friendship. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, look, in Mexico, it actually traditionally can be a gesture of friendship. Well, I mean, obviously they're just trying to keep abreast of things. You know? <laughs> yeah. No. Titillation in its worst form. Yes. What about you, Mark? What's the most violent thing you've ever done? Um, the most violent thing we, that I've ever done is um, I one day I um, kicked my amplifier when I was on Did stage. Did it grab your breast? Or? <clears throat> no, it didn't. It just wasn't sounding very good. But uh, I gave it a bit of boot, but um, the bloody thing, I broke my foot and I had to walk around in plaster for the next, uh, you know, um, six weeks. There's a light going out in sympathy then, don't worry about <laughs> it. It was, yes. These machines stick very close together. You can't hit one, others know about it. Be very careful. Right. Do you reckon violence gets you anywhere? Um, gets you anywhere. Could get you anywhere. Where? Well, could you... In the groin? In the groin. Yeah. Or in the... And when you head. use it? In the jail? Get... Does it get your in head in jail? life? Get, does it get you in life? No, I don't think so. You don't think we I think, I think, no. No, I don't think so. I think it's an immediate reaction because some people are brought up in life to think that that's the way to behave because their parents behave like that because, you know, they're unhappy or they drink or whatever. And, um, you know, we're conditioned to think that that's the way to behave. But no, I mean, like, talking about things and, and working them out, but that's an initial reaction, and I think that's how we're conditioned sometimes. Some of us are. Anyway, pass us another dish before oh, yeah, I punch sure, your mate. face in, will you? Just watch it, mate. Sorry about that ugly moment there. But, Mark, you don't think that <laughs> you need violence to sort of survive in a violent world? Well, I, th I think that, um, you know, the thing is, is that, is, is that trying to eat soup out of this is very bloody difficult, you know. I mean... Oh, it's, uh, it's a protected, don't I? No, I, I don't think so, necessarily. I think that you can retreat from a violent situation and get away with it, especially when you're my size, you know, which is sort of small, it's sort of... Um, You've got it yeah. wimpy and small and yeah. quiet yeah. and introverted and everything like that. But yeah. you've got to sort of, when something violent is about to happen to you, you've got to run away. First of all, how do songs usually get written in the band? Well... Usually someone pulls out a pen and a paper and uh, they get written. I usually, um, usually I'll come up with a bit of a tune or something, won't I? And then we'll see if... Chrissy's got some words that'll go with it. Usually I've been got something a little hanging around and I think, oh, that'll go with that. So usually that's what happens. And uh, then we develop it from there. And does everyone in the band take part in the arrangements, in the developing of, of once you've done the music and you've done the words? Yes, Mark is particularly good, this gentleman here, is particularly good on arrangements and is the musical leader I make group. a lot of appointments for people. 
generally. And what, hang on, what do you mean by that, the musical leader? Ready, please, well, Mr. Mark, Music. Well, when I say that, Mark is usually... Mark, Mark um, usually um, works out everything and because he writes a lot of the music, we tend to turn to him for guidance, I should say. And is that okay with everyone in the band? I mean, do, do you or, or any of the other the two boys ever feel like being the musical leader yourselves? Um, no, not really. I mean, everybody has input, but um, Mark's just the best musician in regards to... And I suppose because he writes the songs, uh, writes a lot of the music, um, not all the music, some of the others that write music too, but um, because he kind of writes a lot of his songs, he tends to have the um, most say on things, I suppose. And because we all respect his word, we, we like what he does. And he just has that, that knack of being able to really pull good things out of the hat. <coughs> okay. Enough. Are you happy Enough. with that role? No. With that role? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Does it, does it sit easily with your personality to be the musical leader? Oh, that's a pretty deep question, isn't it? I mean, you know, I don't normally talk about stuff like that. Yeah, I know, but you've got to face up to the fact, Marky, that uh, he... Um, it's good to be Sometimes he does. Boss, sometimes, I suppose, yeah, so. I mean, I think it does. I think Mark is a natural... He's a very... He's just a natural, very easy person to work with in, in, in that way. You know? Just a nice guy, I suppose. Mm. Um, well, what about your image? Um, when you think of the image that you portray on stage, does that affect the way the audience treats you? Uh, what? The audience treats me when? When, when? when you're on stage, when you're up there yes. in front of the band, yes. being the lead singer yes. and being quite a focus of attention, Yes. what effect do you think that has on the audience? Um, well, they have something to look at, I suppose, and they're entertained and they have something to to relate to and focus on. Um, if I wasn't there, I wonder what they would do. <laughs> focus on nobody. You know, maybe, you know. How did you all reach that image of, of the divinals? How was that so I can try, When you say image, I kind of think, what is the image of the divinals? I don't really know what the image of the divinals is. I, I don't sit there and analyse it. And it's just the way we are. Um, so I kind of wonder what you're talking about. Isn't it funny? I would say that a lot of attention is focused on you as sort of a central figure. Do you ever feel like you're being objectified? Does it ever worry you? Um, no, not really. Not, not in particular. I think that's my job. I'm the front person of the band and I'm doing my job. Um, when I first started with this group, I used to be very shy, believe it or not, nice to stand there and until I worked out what I had to do and what was inside me and what I had to give. I used to be very inhibited and I used to cop it when I'd get off the, on, in, in the wing, you know, the wings when we'd go off stage and the boys would say, why didn't you do this, why in didn't you wings? do that? Was it? Well, in the wings or at the side the of the pub? <laughs> well, side of the pub. And, um, you know, I used to cop it and they'd say, why don't you do this and why don't you, why don't you move more? So, yeah, I wasn't doing my job properly, so I kind of feel like I'm doing my job properly, you know. In general, how do you both feel about um, using sexuality on stage? Now I'm talking about whether it's a male or a female being the lead singer. How do you feel about that? Using sexuality on I mean, stage. if you think of some of the heavy metal bands, I mean, I guess the classic person is Mick Jagger, but that style of, of using your body and using your sexuality up front. I think it's really wonderful. Well, it looks good sometimes. I love it. I mean, I, I really love that thing of seeing a sexy person up there with sexuality and something that's very earthy. And I really like that, personally. I love to see that in a performer. And a bit of sass. And I love it. Don't you? I mean, you all love it. Oh, uh, uh, you know, I, I like it. I don't it, like yeah. people to be too serious and to take themselves too seriously. I think um, you're up there performing and giving out to the audience and uh, I think that uh, that's part of part of being a human being is your sexuality and your sensuality and you should give it out and that's rock and roll too it's part of rock and roll it's part of performing and you shouldn't be afraid of it you should explore it and and because that's part of your essence do you feel like you've had the freedom to do that with without it being taken advantage of yes I do very much so 
um, to explore and to develop what I do without being um, exploited in a way that I, I don't feel that that's ever happened to me. I feel that I've been able to do and grow and be myself. And I think that's very important. Mm. Do you think that you may be luckier than a lot of other women in bands in that regard, in that you haven't, you don't feel like you're exploited? Um, it's what you choose to be, what you want to happen with yourself. Um, I can't say that I feel luckier than other women in bands. Um, uh, I can't really, you know. I can't speak for other people. Or I can't. I can't compare myself with other people because I just do what I do, and my kind of pathways, you know, my pathway. And I can't say, you know, what's happened to other people, you know. Maybe I have um, been lucky in working with people that understand me and that are sensitive towards what I am, and I have demanded that. I've constantly demanded that, so I suppose I've earned it. And that right, I've had to earn that right. Yeah. What about you, Mark? Do you think that, that it's a thing of the past, that, that um, it's harder for women to make it in rock and roll? Or from what you know, is it, does it still go on? Do women have to work harder to earn that sort of respect? No, I, I think things are changing now because I, I think that there's a lot more girls singing uh, or playing or whatever. Uh, you know, in it's like in a whole new thing has opened up. I mean, now. I saw a great girl lead guitar player the other day she on TV. Incredible. She what was, was fantastic. Uh, I just can't remember. She was awesome. uh, but yeah. she was good, and uh, you know, that's the first time I've ever really seen a great. You know the one. Guitar, guitar I don't know. Player. It was the first time I'd seen her, but she was great. I mean, she was really rock and very raunchy. She had a leotard on or something. She but could she play was... four hundred and seventy notes a minute. Which was I mean, incredible. she was incredible. And like there's this whole cross section that's happening now. So it's changing. And it's it's okay. very frustrating when you're pigeonholed and people say with girls, you're like this because it's not like that. We're we're becoming now. There's just as many girl performers as men performers, but they still want to pigeonhole us, you know. And it's that's very frustrating. When I think there's a lot more of individuality happening within women at the moment, girls, yeah, you know, um, what what they're doing um, compared to what a lot of men do, men copy, but I think girls are really trying to find their own individuality. And, but they're still grouped together and said, oh, this person's like that person, and, you know, and there's pigeonholing, which is so frustrating because I think there's a lot of individuality going on. What do you both think about one night stands? I mean, when I play in a place for only one night, I think that it's a good thing. What about sexual one night stands? Strangers when we move, strangers know. when we play. Um, it's probably becoming more dangerous now. I think so too. I think with all this AIDS business, I think you must be pretty careful. You've know. got to try and conserve we your bodily about fluids that as well. We lately, don't we? About one night stands and all that kind of stuff. I think, I think people in bands must be very careful, extremely careful, because that kind of has always been part of the lifestyle. And... Um, I think now all this business is going on that you can't have one night stands anymore. You've got to be really careful. Are you talking particularly about AIDS? Yeah, I'm talking about AIDS. What about in general? Has your attitude towards no, no, one night stands? I don't find a cure for it. <laughs> in which case, you know, well, there you go. What about one night stands? What our attitude? Yeah, like what about when you were younger? What was your attitude towards one night stands then? Oh boy, I used to have one night stands all the time because I used to think I used to think that was how I was going to find love. So I used to think by going to bed with somebody, I would wake up and they would love me or I would love them and I would find them. Did you ever find love? No, not that way. But that I used to do that a lot. And I used to think, you know. But since then I have learned <laughs> that uh, that's not the way to find love and that's not what a relationship's all about. <laughs>